Jim Candy, Part 2, Chapter 10. You can scream all you want, but if you don't back it up on the field, it's just screaming. Foothill High was unbeaten. They'd crushed teams that we'd barely sneaked by. On Thursday, Coach Downs had shown us films of the game from the year before. Drager's longest run had been eight yards, and by the end of the game, you could see his, in his body language that they'd beaten him. I wasn't going to let that happen. No matter how many times they pounded me into the ground, I wasn't quitting. You never know when you might get a chance to break a long run, my dad had told me many times. Always be ready. We won the coin toss and received the kickoff. Michael Tucker, a senior cornerback, ran it out the 27, and then Drew and I trotted out onto the field, starters for the first time. He looked at me, his eyes lit up like Christmas. Here we go, Mick, he whispered. Our first play was a power toss right. Drew's pitch was too slow, forcing me to break stride, which is why two Fit Hill players were waiting for me at the corner. I lowered my shoulder and drove into the first guy, but he held on until a second tackler brought me down. I gained two yards, maybe three. On second down, I went straight up the middle with pretty much the same result. That set up third down and five for a first down. Drew threw a quick slant right on the money to our tight end. Bo Jones caught it but was tackled a yard short of the first down, forcing a punt. On the sidelines, I told myself to be patient. Two running plays don't make a game. I knew that. I'd break a decent run on the next series. All I needed was for the offensive line to give me a sliver of daylight. Foothill managed a couple of first downs, but then got nailed for a holding penalty and punted the ball back. On the first down, I ran a sweep left. When the blocking broke down, I reversed field, hoping to catch Foothill over pursuing. But their defensive end had stayed home. He wrapped me up around the knees and dropped me for a 10-yard loss. After that, Drew threw a couple of dink passes that gained six yards, and we had to punt again. Coming off the field, I kept my head up. Games are won and lost in your mind, as much as on the field. So that's a pretty good attitude that Mick is having. Yes, they're down, they're not doing great, but he knows he has to mentally stay tough if he wants to win this game. Both de defenses dominated throughout the first quarter and into the second, but just before halftime, Foothill marched down the field as if they were playing a middle school team. Everything that hadn't been working for them, slant passes, draws, screens, suddenly worked. It made no sense, but sometimes football is a crazy game. The Foothill quarterback took the ball into the end zone, untouched on a bootleg from the eight-yard line. Our defense had fallen for a fake to the tailback. Foothill's kicker missed the extra point, so at the break, we were down six. In the locker room, Down said the right things. How one touchdown was nothing, how we just had to keep fighting and things would go our way. The important thing was to stick to the game plan. That's what he said, but it's not what he did. All through the first half, he'd had me run the ball. I hadn't gained much yardage, but I could feel their defense wearing down. Soon I'd break a big one. But instead of sticking with the running game, Downs called for three passes to open the second half. A screen that gained a yard, a long bomb to Deshaun Free that fell incomplete, and a slant that was nearly intercepted. We had to punt again. The defense held Foothill to one first down, but our possession went like this. Incomplete pass, incomplete pass, incomplete pass, punt. Downs had given up on the running game, had given up on me, but Drew hadn't. The draw play should be open, he said, as we stood on the sidelines waiting for another chance. I'm going to call it next series, no matter what Downs sends in, so be ready. A freshman quarterback making his first start changing a coach's play. That took guts. On our next possession, Drew, th <coughs> Drew threw two more passes, completing one, setting up third and five. We'd thrown on eight straight plays, and Downs sent in a ninth. They're going to be blitzing, Drew said. We'll run the draw. You changing the play, Perez said. Drew nodded. I'm changing the play. Perez looked around at the other linemen. Let's block this sucker. And they did. When I took the handoff, a huge hole opened right in front of me. In two strides, I was past the linemen and the blitzing linebackers and was into the secondary. The strong safety came up and tried to tackle me high, but I fought him off. I cut left and juked the cornerback, and suddenly I was looking at 70 yards of empty space. The same feeling came to me that always comes when I break a long one. It was as if I were four years old again, out in my backyard, the little mini football cradled in my arm, the green grass underfoot, and the end zone straight ahead. I tucked the ball tightly against my side and took off straight for the goal line, my legs churning up the yards. At the foothill 20, someone dived for my ankles and caught my heel. I stumbled a little, almost went down, but then righted myself, and seconds later I was in the end zone. I didn't spike the ball. That's a 15-yard penalty in King Co. 
Instead, I ran to our sideline, took off my helmet, and raised it to the section where my dad was sitting. He was on his feet, pumping his fist and cheering, as our kicker, K.G. Solomon, split the uprights with the extra point, putting us ahead 7-6. to six. Our lead held throughout the third quarter and into the fourth. Downs had me running the ball again to eat up time. I'd pop free for a first down now and again, but we couldn't sustain anything. When Foothill when Foot had the ball, they'd marched 20 or 30 yards, but then something, a penalty, a dropped pass, a missed block, would stop them. I remember looking up at the clock in the fourth quarter, still 7-6, to six, with 6 minutes and 32 seconds left. Was my touchdown run in the third quarter going to be enough to win? So that was pretty bold of Drew to go against his coach's wishes. Um, can you think of any time that you know a player who has done that and it's worked out, or perhaps it hasn't worked out for them, and what were the consequences? So here we have a very close game against Foothill, and it says there's 6 minutes and 32 seconds left. So if you think about that in a football game, 6 minutes and 32 seconds left in a game, how much can happen in that time? After a short Foothill punt, I carried the ball twice, gaining 7 yards and setting up a third and three near midfield. Downs called for a quick out pass to Deshaun Free on the three. Deshaun must have thought it was on four because he was late getting off the line of scrimmage, forcing Drew to hold the ball longer than he should have. Just as he stepped up to throw, Foothill's middle linebacker blindsided him, jarring the ball free. It bounded crazily along the ground for five yards or so until one of Foothill's big linemen, number 73, scooped it up. He was slow, but he had a 10-yard lead and only 50 yards to run. He rumbled down the field, gasping for air, looking over his shoulder every five yards. I was closing in on him with every stride, but I never caught him. Our lead was gone. Worse, when I looked upfield, I saw Drew flat on the ground. Guys were standing over him, and our trainer, an old guy named Mr. Stimes, was kneeling next to him. By the time I reached him, Drew was up, but he was clutching his right elbow, fighting the pain. Foothill hit the extra point, making the score 13-7. to as they lined up to kick off, Coach Downs called me over. Drew won't be able to get any zip on the ball, not with that elbow. Feed me the ball, I said. I can win it for us. I could see his mind working. Then he nodded. Let's see what you got. He walked away, and suddenly my legs felt like they weighed 100 pounds each. I was tired, sore, beat up. Then I thought of the stakes, the league title, the spot in the playoffs. I thought of all the teams I'd played on, all the clinics and camps I'd gone to, all the hours and hours of practicing beginning when I was four. This, it was for this. All that work was for this. Tucker brought the kickoff straight up the field to the 38-yard line, giving us good field position. Foothill figured we'd be passing, so they were playing their linebackers deep and their safeties even deeper, making it a perfect time to run. On first down, I drove the ball off right tackle on the stretch play. Foothill's outside linebacker tripped and their safety was late coming up, so I picked up 12 yards before I was gang-tackled. Two minutes and 48 seconds. We went without a huddle. Their linebackers and safeties were still playing deep. This time we ran the draw. Once I got past the linemen, I had eight free yards before I was dragged down at their 40. 2.30 left in the game, clock running. Foothill came up tight in their standard defense. They were done worrying about the pass. They were looking for me. I gained four yards on a toss sweep. Two minutes and two seconds left. I took a handoff straight up the middle for eight yards, running right through an outside linebacker, setting up a first down on 27, 140. Foothill put eight guys in the box, daring Drew to throw. I was supposed to carry the ball over left tackle, but there was no hole. I stumbled against one of my own linemen, bounced off him, then reversed in direction and headed to the right. Somebody, maybe Deshaun, laid a great block on one of the Foothill guys who had a clear shot at me. I looked up and saw an open field. If only I could have made my legs move faster. Just across the 10-yard line, a foothill player tracked me down. When I hit the turf, I landed smack on top of the ball, knocking the wind out of me. For a long second, I just lay there. But the clock, and with it the game, was ticking away. I forced myself back to the huddle. The line judge raced to the hash mark and laid the ball down. The guys lined up. Drew took the snap, and he immediately spiked the ball to stop the clock. Second and goal on the 8-yard line. 69 seconds left. Down sent in three players so we wouldn't waste time huddling up. All three were for me. A draw play in two sweeps, the first right and the second left. I sucked in air. We broke the huddle and I took my possession. Hut, hut! Drew dropped back as if to pass, then slipped me the ball. It was the play I'd scored on earlier. But this time, the foothill linebackers didn't bite. I was lucky to fight my way back to the line of scrimmage before I went down. Third and goal from the eight. 56, 
55-54. Hurriedly, we lined up. As Drew took the snap, I broke for the outside. I watched the ball in my hands, squared my shoulders, and turned upfield, my eyes on the end zone. I thought I'd make it, even as I saw their safety close on me. I lowered my shoulder and hit him at the five. He wrapped his arms around me and pulled me down, but not before I'd fallen forward two more yards. Fourth and goal from the three-yard line. 34, 33, 32. We had enough time. We'd get the playoff. Three yards. That's all I needed. Three yards. Everything slowed. I remember seeing the faces of the fans in the end zone, knowing they were screaming but somehow not hearing them. Hut? Drew called, and I heard that. The center snapped the ball, and I broke left. I caught Drew's pitch out in the stride, my eyes on the end zone. It was so close I could taste it. I saw number 50, Foothill's best linebacker, shed his blocker. I felt him hit me. All I had to do was keep driving with my legs, and they'd carry me forward. It was just him and me, and there was no way one guy could bring me down, not with so much on the line. That's when I felt the turf slipping out from under me. It was like being in a nightmare and wanting to scream, but not being able to. I could feel myself going down, feel the ground rushing up at me. At the last instant, I reached the ball forward, trying to stretch over the goal line. I had to break the plane. I had to. And then I was down. I looked at the ball, looked at my hands stretched out as far as I could reach. I was 12 inches short. Okay, so his big break game where he gets to start and prove himself to everyone. He doesn't do a terrible job. Remember, he's just this little freshman trying to do the best he can. But he falls short in the last few seconds of the game, and they lose against Foothill.